understand how the credit risk is computed then we would also look out for the credit spread right how do i typically uh, get into the computation of the credit spread what is the kind of relationship that the credit spread carries with uh, the maturity period the which is the time to maturity and what kind of relationship the credit spread carries with respect to the interest rates that's one more uh, dimension that we will uh, look at how to determine the value of the firm firm value and volatility what are the various uh, mechanisms to determine the value of the firm as well as uh, the volatility and uh, looking at uh, uh, the subordinated debt right especially not a senior debt how do i get into uh, the valuation of uh, the subordinated uh, debt how do i uh, look at the values uh, valuation mechanisms relating to that and how do i use the various uh, interest rate specific uh, models for accomplishing that aspect interest rate specific models then how do i compute the probability of default and the loss given default using uh, let's say the merton model or any other models then looking at uh, the credit risk portfolio based models we'll talk about a few credit risk uh, portfolio based models like uh, getting into a credit matrix and uh, kmv kind of uh, models we'll get back to them or probably credit risk plus also so what are the key things associated with these models that's one thing that we will uh, try to look at and uh, uh, finally uh, we would also uh, try to focus uh, on the credit risk uh, of the various uh, derivative instruments involved so we'll we'll specifically uh, look out for uh, credit derivatives where uh, we look into the hedging of our credit risk using the various uh, derivatives and trying to look out for instruments like credit default swaps and total return swaps kind of uh, instruments and uh, so how do i uh, typically uh, mitigate uh, my uh, mitigate my positions using the derivatives and uh, we are also talking about uh, Uh, a vulnerable kind of options we'll talk about uh, these kind of things towards the last a vulnerable options which are more like derivatives with the credit risk involved so we will uh, look at all those things and finally uh, uh, in valuing a swap and uh, these kind of uh, derivatives how do i incorporate the credit risk exposure all these things we will try to cover as a part of this uh, session right so we'll uh, start off with uh, the merton model and then uh, start moving forward all right now if i have to understand the world of credit risk it is purely associated with the inability and the willingness to pay probably uh, we are talking about uh, a contractual obligation and one party obligated to pay to the other party but defaulting on the same not adhering to the contractual uh, obligation and defaulting on the same uh, is what we are referring to as the credit risk now the assessment of that credit risk the value of that credit risk is very much important as a part of the risk management process because uh, uh, one based on uh, what is its value uh, the risk manager would be thinking of how to mitigate it so as we have discussed earlier whenever we talk about uh, the credit risk one is with respect to loan or debt inability to pay the interest or the principal as per the contractual obligations that is what uh, 
is the default that is associated with the debt and the loan payments. And the second major aspect that comes is a counterparty risk, which could be involved with respect to derivatives uh, transactions, where the value is positive, but the other party failing to make the payment, resulting in the loss for the current party. That is what is getting classified as the counterparty risk. So, uh, basically, I could also look out for any kind of contracts where we are trying to work out on the uh, derivatives by using the derivatives to mitigate the risk, credit risk. We are calling them as credit derivatives. Today, one of the more uh, popular instruments in the market. So, we have to look out for these kind of instruments also. Now, getting into uh, the value, computing the value of this credit risk, we have seen that a Merton based model is one of the more prominent things to evaluate the credit risk. Now, as we have discussed earlier in, in many occasions also, it uses the concept of the Black-Scholes model, the formula of Black-Scholes model, the assumptions of the Black-Scholes model to typically uh, evaluate the value of the, uh, to, to evaluate the credit risk, to provide some information regarding the credit risk, which could be in terms of computing the probability of default, etc. But as we have already looked at it, the major, major uh, uh, assumptions or the, the simplest form associated with this model is we are assuming that the debt is a single, the debt is a single zero coupon bond with a maturity equal to the average maturity period of the entire set of securities. That is one assumption that we have made. We have also made that the markets are perfect. The financial markets are perfect means uh, no taxes, no transaction costs, or even no bankruptcy costs. So, no other costs that are in involved with the same. And uh, we are talking about a non-dividend paying stock. Non-dividend paying firm. And on the top of all these things, we have also said that at any point in time, if the value of the firm is less than the value of the debt, we said that the firm is going to default and the difference between the two is what is the loss that is absorbed by the debt investors. But at the same time, if the value of the firm is greater than the value of the debt, the difference is what is the value that would be paid to the equity investors. This is what is the basic workout we have done. So in this case, the equity investor will receive nothing and the debt investor will receive uh, a cut in their value. Whereas uh, in this case, the debt, equity, the debt investor will receive uh, everything, the whole principle whereas the equity investor will receive the balance and uh, which is exactly similar to that of a call option. This payout is what is exactly similar to that of a call option. If I join these two, it is coming out as either the maximum of the value of the firm minus the value of the debt or zero. The maximum of these two is what the equity investor is going to receive in case uh, of this. So based on this, I could relate that the value of the equity, right, probably using the concept of options, 
I could say that the value of the equity is same as call option on a firm whose strike price is equal to the value of the debt and we have made an assumption that the debt is nothing but a single zero coupon bond with the total amount equal to the value of uh, the total uh, liabilities which is maturing at time t so the value of the equity is getting mature is getting expressed like this which means if the, as long as the value of the firm is less than the strike price which is the value of the debt the equity holder is going to get nothing but if the value of the firm increases more than the value of the debt the difference is the payoff that the equity investor is going to get so the same logic we have extended even for the value of the debt right so i could have simply considered value of the debt as a risk free investment along with a short put option along with a short put option on the firm with the strike price equal to the value of the debt itself so here we will uh, try to get the value of the debt as nothing but the total the total uh, value the risk free rate of uh, return basically uh, it's a risk free investment so whatever the d that we are going to get minus the maximum of the value of uh, the debt minus the value of the firm comma zero 